Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to finish up a mod weapon. My toaster is looking okay, but it could still really use some polish. Right now, my main problem with it is that it's kind of too centered. I want it to be more to the left. And by the way, all weapons should face to the right when you make them. The first thing I did was that I mocked up what I wanted to change in my image program. Based on this, I think that this toaster should really be... 50 pixels to the left. So I can nudge it left in two ways. The first way is to move the toaster 50 pixels left in its images. But this will change the way that it animates because the pivot of the motions will change relative to the position of the image. For example, imagine that this is your image and that circle is the pivot. Notice that the actual movement of the weapon is different than it was before now that it's moved to the left. The animation has changed. The other way is that I can subtract 50 pixels from the X position of every single frame in every single animation and particle spawn. Now I know this will be a pain, but this choice will be the best way since I'm already happy with the way it animates. And changing the animation will be even harder. So here I go. Okay, it feels a little bit better on the screen now. To the left. I had to increase the speed of the flying toes too to account for the change. And it looks cool, but the toes flying out it's still kind of even. Like both toasts fly out at the same speed and seem to me a bit unrealistically uniform. So I'm going to split the spawn node into two so that I can control each toast individually. This N2 controls how many spawn from this position on this frame. But I can change this to one. And now I have individual control over each piece of flying toast. It should look the same right now. But I'll adjust it now to give it a little variation. Okay, it looks a lot more chaotic flying out now since one always flies out harder than the other. I spaced it out a little bit more too. I like it. Also, I reduced the amount of ammo to 12. I thought it looked more like a real loaf. Now something is still kind of missing. If this is supposed to be badly burnt toast, really this toast should be causing a lot of smoke. So I created this smoke image. I called it toastersmoke.png. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but layered it should look pretty nice. And you can feel free to steal this smoke image for your own particles if you want to. Now to implement this, I have to create a new particle emitter here. And I put toaster smoke here because that's the name of the image. Note that I left it set to blend mode 2, which means use transparency. And now I'll add some smoke spawns to this shot 1 animation. Okay, you can see my smoke spawns here. Since the emitter with ID 1 is the toaster smoke, all the spawns with E equals 1 are the smoke spawns. I tried to make the spawns occur as the toast travels across the screen. Looks pretty sweet. Now I want to add one more finishing touch to this weapon. I want to smooth out the way that the toaster cools down. See how the red kind of just pops in and out? I'm going to use a particle to make it look like it smooths away. To do this, I'm going to have to do two things. One is add a transition image that has the slot up and the light on. And I don't have this yet. And I need this so that I don't have to try to match the motion of the particle with a toaster motion like here. I just want the particle to spawn in place and fade quickly or it'll be too hard to implement. The other thing I'm going to need is to create a particle. The particle will spawn as soon as the transition image stops showing and make it look like the heat is fading. It'll create the illusion that the toaster is cooling off. Okay, here's the transition image. It's just like the others, except it has both the light on and the switch up. And here's the particle image. This will show up right after the transition image is done showing. The background is black, but the black will appear transparent when I use the add blending for it. Using add blending is very handy for effects like lights or fire. Now if you want to simulate how add blending will look ahead of time, you can mock it up in GIMP by using the addition layer blend mode. And if you're using Photoshop, use the linear dodge add layer blend mode. So let's make the emitter. The new one should have ID 2 since 0 and 1 are taken and set it to add blend mode which is 3. And I'm going to have to copy one of the toast spawns to spawn it. Set the E to 2, which corresponds to the emitter I want to use. And let's move it over to the general area where it should spawn. Now let's take a look at what it looks like in Gun App. Uh, needs some more work. I decided to stop here really quick to show you where I'm at. And maybe give a better idea of what I'm trying to do with the particle. 
Now I'm going to take my time to add the transition image and time the emitter with the same settings that I already showed you how to use. Okay, so things didn't really work out as I planned. I had put the fading on the shot, but I removed it again because it kind of deadened the feel of the shot impact since the red fading was so smooth looking on every firing. However, I kept it on the reload so you can see the effect and see how I made it. Look for it at the end of the reload. See? The red fades nice and smooth. Now this weapon is looking polished, but there's one more hidden thing that you should know. Gunapp has multiplayer. So wouldn't it be cool if your weapon can shoot other devices over the Wi-Fi? Of course it would. Right now this weapon is still shooting bullets over the Wi-Fi because that's what the scribble gun had. So the way we fix that is with the net send attribute of a frame. Any frame you want can send a net send. A separate net send message will be sent for every frame that has one. However, the most important thing to keep in mind about this is that you really want to be careful with the net sends because you can flood your network if you put too many next to each other. Plus, it makes for a pretty non-fun experience on the devices that receive too many concurrent net sends. So just remember to use as few net sends as possible to get your effect. A good rule of thumb is about one net send per shot animation, two at most. So what number do you put in a net send for the frame? We had a table put up on the wiki for what each value causes on the other device. So you can apply the one you think is appropriate for your weapon. So let's take a look. Okay, on the PC version, you can enable networking by pressing zero. You see that? As you can see, the toast is causing bullets. <laughs> and you can see it gets network signals from the device too. But uh, you won't see the impact effects because um, they don't come with a PC version of Gun App. So what about my toast? I feel pretty strongly that the burnt toast should cause any targets to catch fire. So I'm going to go to the wiki and see what number corresponds to the fire impact effect. Here, flame shot number 4. And I'm going to paste it in here where it says net send. Save it. Reload it. See yeah. Um, to be honest, that's not really good enough. I want something a little more blasty. So let's see what else we got. Let's try eight. Screen shatter. Like a bomb. Switch it to eight. Save it. Reload it. It's pretty good. So I'm going to delay it a little bit. Reload it. Pretty good. Needs a little more delay. Reload it. Nice. All right, so I've got all my assets ready, and all I have to do is zip them up. Name it Toaster. And here's my mod weapon. This weapon is done. So that's almost everything there is to know about making a gun app mod. Also, if this is your first weapon, remember that it's very easy to simplify a weapon. For example, you can reduce the amount of images it uses by just deleting these, or delete out animations like reload, which lets you also delete ammo, of course. Or if there are multiple shot animations, you can get rid of all of them except for one. You can also remove emitters and their spawns. The weapon will still work without these things. In fact, like I said, if you're using the Windows version of Gun App, it's pretty easy to test what breaks the game. Not to mention that the Windows version also gives you more feedback on why you might be crashing. So I hope you enjoyed this demo. I'll have this toast weapon posted on the wiki as an example for you, and have fun.